Most travelers coming to Beijing come looking for a taste of the past, a bite of history, a feast of traditional Chinese culture. And so they go to the main attractions, the Great Wall, the Forbidden City, the Lama Temple, the Temple of Heaven, you know, the usual suspects. But there's a spot in the city that is no less significant historically, but one that seems to be flying under the radar of everyone. And chances are you will not find it on any of the lists of places to visit in Beijing. It's actually a pagoda, and it is the oldest surviving building in the core area of Beijing. This structure is so old, it's even older than Beijing itself. And today, we're checking it out, so let's go. So our story today takes place in one of the previous lives of Beijing, over 900 years ago in the early 12th century. Now mind you, at the time, Beijing did not exist. This Beijing didn't start to take shape until the 15th century during the Ming Dynasty. And let me show you something super interesting. You see this river? This used to be a moat during the Ming and Qing dynasties, basically part of a fortification system that protected the old city of Beijing from invaders. Now, a few meters down would have been the city walls. They don't exist anymore, but that's where they would have been. And inside the city wall would have been, well, the city. Now look where I'm standing. This is the river. I'm standing outside of it, which means I'm standing outside of the moat, which means that I'm standing outside of the old city, which means that I'm technically not in Beijing. <gasps> Gasp! The grounds that I'm standing on used to belong to a city much older than Beijing called Nanjing. Nan means south, Jing means capital, so the southern capital. And Nanjing was the secondary capital of the Liao dynasty. Nanjing obviously doesn't exist anymore. Well, at least not this one, because there's another city in China also called Nanjing, which weird enough is also the capital of many dynasties. But the Liao dynasty Nanjing doesn't exist, and it was absorbed into Beijing as it expanded. But it's so interesting to think of a time when here wasn't Beijing. And it's in Nanjing that our destination is, the Pagoda of Tianning Si, or Tianning Temple, that way. Wow, I can see it from here, all the way in the back. This is humongous. I mean, you can see it from a distance, so... Oh, this is exciting. the Tianming Temple and its famous pagoda. It's even outside on the plaque. Wow. Here we are inside. It is so peaceful. Almost no one very few people. I honestly am gonna skip the temple here at the tour and I'm gonna go right to the main attraction. Oh wow, here it is, the oldest surviving building in the core area of Beijing. What a beauty. I honestly feel overwhelmed by this because even though I've seen it in pictures before, but I never imagined that it would be this imposing. I mean, it's just, I can't put it in the frame as well. Like I can't see the top of it at all. It is 57.8 meters, one of the tallest at the time, even up to the Ming and Qing dynasty. This is a piece of living history. This is 904 years old. And it's still standing to this day in its original built. 
Like how? Wow. And the details on it, the ornaments, so intricate. Look at the dragons at the bottom, just in rows, one after the other. And then the guardians of the Buddha, they look so animated. They're big, huge, protecting the Buddha in the middle. And they look scary, actually. You can see that some parts of the stones have fallen, but that's just the wear and tear of old age. And you see the lotuses here in three rows. And on top, the 13 layers of eaves. You guys, there are wind chimes at the bottom of the eaves. And I was reading that there's 3,400 of them. And now that there's a bit of wind blowing, I was able to hear them. I can't hear them right now because they don't work on command, but I definitely heard a little bit of a ding sound not long ago. Let's see if it's gonna work. Do one for the camera, please. Yeah, it's not gonna work. This is what's called a solid pagoda, which means that it's a block of bricks. It's just a stone structure. There are no doors to get you in. There are no stairwells that can bring you all the way to the top. And even though at some of these facades, there are some windows, these are just for artistic purposes and really serve no function. that I just learned was that you can go around the pagoda but you can only go in one way which is clockwise. I made the fatal mistake of going on the opposite side and one lady was like no 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 and so lesson learned. The Tianning Temple Pagoda has a very interesting history. For a very long time, it was thought to have been built during the Sui Dynasty, which came before the Liao Dynasty in the late 500s and the early 600s. That was the historical understanding during the Ming and Qing Dynasties until 1935, when an architect couple flipped the script on its head and said, wait a minute, let's reconsider that. These couples were Liang Sicheng, the father of modern Chinese architecture, and his wife, Lin Huiyin. Together, they co-wrote a paper in which they challenged the age of the pagoda based on literature, but also on its physical appearance. And they made the conclusion that it's not from the Sui dynasty, but it bears all the hallmarks of a Liao dynasty pagoda. It has 13 layers of eaves. The eaves are dense and it has an octagonal form or eight faces and the ultimate evidence came in 1992 years after the couple passed away when during renovations a stone tablet was found at the top of the pagoda and on which was engraved the construction date of the structure the ninth year of the reign of emperor tian Qing, which roughly translates to 1119, which makes it this year 904 years old. Not as old as we originally thought, but at over 900 years, it's still pretty impressive. And mind you, this pagoda is still maintaining its original form. It's virtually untouched, which couldn't be the same for the grounds of this temple because the Tianning Temple, even though it has a much longer history than the pagoda itself, it has been rebuilt, renovated, burned down, restored, expanded, shrank over the years. And much of what we see today is actually from the Qing Dynasty. In the Ming Dynasty, this place was held in high regards and it would draw in tens of thousands of people for certain events. And there was this belief for people from outside Beijing coming in to engage in business or in politics or maybe a career in the Imperial Palace. They were advised to come here and pray and that would give them a lot of luck. And there is another saying at the time that if you pray here, luck would be passed down 
three generations. Now, I didn't pray, but I'm hoping that some of the luck in the air would rub off on me, and by extension you guys. Take as much luck as you want. But you can't speak about the Tending Temple Pagoda without speaking about this chimney, which is really hard not to notice. But for that, we need to go outside. A little longer than a few minutes later. After a bit of walking, actually a lot of walking, I was able to make it to the other side of the temple wall. Here is the pagoda in all of its glory still. And right behind me is this chimney. And this chimney is tall, 180 meters high. And the story of this chimney is actually the story of a thermal power plant, Lao Ar Re, which was built in 1972 to provide heating for government agencies in the western side of Beijing, as well as to 50,000 people in residential communities, which is a good thing if you're in Beijing in winter because it can get pretty cold, but it's also a bad thing because it sort of polluted the surroundings of the temple and the pagoda from a aesthetic point of view as well as a architectural perspective. Now, the power plant was eventually decommissioned and in 2015, it was turned into this creative park with a lot of workshops, restaurants, arts and crafts places, which is something very common in Beijing to repurpose industrial spaces. In the mid-2000s, there were talks of whether to uproot this chimney so as to restore the original surroundings of the temple and pagoda now that the chimney wasn't serving any purpose. And by the looks of it, I guess the decision was made to just keep it as is. And I get it. The power plant and the chimney are both part of Beijing's history. Sure, they happen at a later time, but they're still a chapter of the city's story. And so now we have two towers from two completely different eras serving two completely different functions opposite from each other. And I don't know, in some way, there's some poetic beauty in that. I hope you guys enjoyed our little trip to the temple. I honestly normally just shy away from going to temples and religious houses in general just because it's not my thing and out of respect for people who are praying and worshipping. But I'm happy that I made it in and I saw the pagoda up close and personal because yes, it is of religious significance, but it's also of historical and artistic value. I mean, look at it. It speaks for itself. And I'm happy as well, along the way, I was able to learn a bit more about Buddhist rituals. You know, keep it clockwise, you guys. Just keep it clockwise. And so if you're in Beijing and have some time on your hand, maybe pop down here and check out the oldest building in the core area of Beijing. It is worth it. This was all for me for this week. I will see you next time. Until then, 再见!